This is the new Hohe M6 gimbal for smartphones and it does everything you expect a gimbal to do and more because this AI sensor makes this gimbal really special. Now, is that what I would call the best smartphone gimbal? Let's find out. The perfect gimbal doesn't exist and this one isn't either, but Hohem has done an amazing job at bringing the best of all the gimbals out there in the market and pack it into a single one gimbal. Now, are there any areas that they could have done a better job? Absolutely, and we'll go through them in a minute. But when you take into consideration what you get for what you pay, this is an amazing deal. Because when you first hold the gimbal in your hands, the first thing you're gonna notice is that this feels really nice. It's quite grippy and it certainly doesn't feel cheap in any way, shape or form. Now, one area that I wish they could have done a better job was on the locking of the motors because you do get locks for the pan and roll axis, but not so much for the tilt axis. Another thing that is really nice is that you get this detachable AI sensor, which is also an RGB light and by color is really well implemented. The fact that it's detachable means that you can either use it on the selfie lens or the rear lenses. And I always recommend to use the rear lenses, especially the main lens. And the controls are really nice. You can easily adjust the color temperature of the light with this jog wheel. So if you are filming on a sunny day or on a cloudy day, whether it's daytime or nighttime, you can easily adjust the color temperature to fit whatever environment you're filming on. And the RGB light, well, you know, if you never had an RGB light, this could be a really nice little RGB light. If you follow any of my videos, you know that one of the things that I like to do when I first get a gimbal is an up and down test. And I have to say that with this gimbal, you can go up and down, down and up, no problem whatsoever. This gimbal behaves as a gimbal is expected to behave. So in that regard, this gimbal is really nice. You can do uh, crane shots with a monopod attaching it to the bottom of the gimbal no problem this is gonna be a really nice solution for you especially because it's listed as a 400 gram payload and i have pushed it right up to 600 even above 600 and and it has performed really well now one thing that you need to bear in mind is that once you go over 400 grams you are likely to be using lenses filters and other accessories on the lens mount area and it's gonna be too heavy for the gimbal's uh, roll axis. So you're gonna need counterweights. When I first got this gimbal, I looked at some of the threads that you get in the roll axis and the tilt axis. And I'm like, what's the point of <laughs> these threads there? I thought someone's gone mad. But then you realize that you can use them to add the counterweight. So you don't have to have a clamp mounted onto the gimbal itself. And it's little details like this that make a gimbal really stand out. Another thing that is really nice is that the actual mounting mechanism is wide enough to take on wide and heavy cases like the small rig case. Because in some of the gimbals, you know that once you go into wide cases, you have to kind of ram it into the mount because it's not wide enough and you are kind of pushing it to the limit. Here, you got plenty of width. It will take it without a hitch. And I think that's a really nice touch. Most gimbals these days behave very similar. You know, one does something slightly different than the other, but essentially they all do the same, okay? But this gimbal has something that no other gimbal has, and it's this special sensor. And I'm really excited about it because if you're a solo content creator, this is gonna be a game changer because rather than having static shots when you're filming, you can now introduce movement. This has amazing tracking capabilities and the best of all is that it allows you to adjust the headroom. Because as you know full well, when you use the traditional face tracking, you end up with a massive headroom at the top and then what you need to do in post is zoom in and then you end up wasting a lot of framing. With this sensor, that all changes because you can adjust the headroom and this is done really, really well. The best thing I can do is to do a little sequence in this corner of the wall that I'm in, which actually is really nice, so that you can see for yourself how amazing this sensor is. The first shot that I'm gonna do is me entering this area where I'm in, and you'll be able to see what an amazing tracking this AI sensor does. And the best of all is that it's detachable, so you can use it with the front and rear lenses. And to make things even better, this is totally independent from the Hohe app. So you can use it with your third-party app, whether it's ProTake, Filmic Pro, or whatever other app that you use. You can use this sensor and do all the tracking and all the features that this sensor has and film in your preferred app, which I think it's phenomenal.
this is going to be really interesting because I'm going to be walking from behind the tree into this uh, area where I'm in and you're going to be able to see how this sensor is able to keep tracking me even when I'm behind an object and it's able to pick me up. We're gonna set up the final shot and it, this is just me walking down and stopping here by the fence. And I want you to think about the possibilities of this. You know, this can track you when you are cycling, when you are running, when you are moving around. You could be doing a cooking program and the gimbal can track you as you move around the kitchen, as you open cabinets. You could be a fitness instructor and this could be tracking you as you do your workout. Just think about the possibilities. This is really, really nice. When it comes to vlogging, this gimbal is actually really good because all you need to do is triple tap the gimbal and it will spin around and you can then do all the vlogging talking to the real lens rather than the selfie lens. This is the quality that you get with the iPhone selfie lens, which is okay when it's daylight or in a very well lit environment. But look at the quality when you compare it to the main real lens. And this is the quality of the real lens using an ND filter, because the whole point of using the real lens is that you can also easily attach an ND filter and you get a much better image. So in my opinion, there is no comparison. Vlogging with the real lens is always gonna be so much better. And another thing that is great about it is this detachable LED light that you can use it either on the front selfie lens or the real lenses. And this is gonna make a massive difference if you shoot in low light conditions or in the evening or nighttime, because it's gonna be the difference between being well lit or not. When it comes to vertical filming, this gimbal is actually really good because you have no restrictions of movement whatsoever. And another thing that you can do with this gimbal that I have never seen with any other gimbal is this. You can go from horizontal to vertical <laughs> in a matter of seconds, just like that. And now you can go back to horizontal. It's all done. I mean, <laughs> this is really insane. I can now go into vertical and I can get my shot and obviously go back to horizontal. Now, this is mostly for when you need to do a little bit of an adjustment on the fly. If you do vertical, you need to basically set the clamp correctly and then mount the phone in a vertical configuration. But if you want to go between horizontal and vertical for a quick shot, <laughs> this is as quick as this, which I think is incredible. So in that regard, this gimbal, whether it's for horizontal or vertical filming, is so so good if you're liking this video so far hit the like button because it genuinely helps with the youtube algorithm and more people will get to watch this video and if you hit the subscribe button i promise this i won't hold it against you are there any negatives about this gimbal because it wouldn't be a fair review if i just gloss over it and i don't really mention it because the perfect gimbal doesn't exist and like i said earlier in the video this isn't either okay so other than the fact that the tilt lock doesn't exist, that's a bit of a bummer, but I can live with that. The app is okay. It does everything that an app is supposed to do. You get 24, 30, and 60 frames per second. And in general terms, it's fine. You know, it gives you pretty much everything every other app does. Now, the problem I have is that if you set the frame rate to 24 frames per second, <laughs> The shutter speed is either 1 12th or 30th or 60th of a second. They don't have 48 or 50th of a second. What that means is that sticking to the 180 degree rule is pretty much impossible. And that to me is a real bummer. Another thing that I find a bit annoying is the fact that you don't have 25 frames per second as a default frame rate. You got 24, 30 and 60 and I shoot everything at 25 frames per second because I like much better how YouTube encodes 25 frames per second than 24. So that to me is a real problem that will force me to use a third party app. Another thing that is a bit of a disappointment because it promised a lot but it didn't quite deliver for me is this jog wheel. You can use it to adjust the intensity of the uh, LED light. So that, in my opinion, is really, really nice. And you can go from bicolor to RGB. So that actually is really well implemented. You can focus with it 
but I don't think I've ever done manual focus on a smartphone and I don't imagine anybody doing it, so I don't really understand what the functionality is. And the zooming that you can do with this uh, latch or this lever is mostly for reframing. It's not for zooming through a take because it's just not smooth enough. So you just have to bear that in mind. Any of these issues can be fixed with a firmware update and hopefully Hohem will do that in the future. But the beauty of this gimbal is that you can use a third party app and you don't really need to use the app itself. Yeah, okay, there might be a couple of instances where you need to go on the app to adjust the tension of the motors and how fast or slow you want them to move. And that is a really nice feature that this gimbal gives you that hardly any other gimbal gives you. <laughs> so I'm kind of glossing over it, but that adjustment alone makes a big difference. But I think this gimbal is most suited for someone that uses a third party app because you can change the modes on the gimbal itself, you can switch the cameras, you can do everything on the gimbal itself, even do a general calibration reset. So in my opinion, the functionality that you get with this gimbal way compensates for the problems or the shortcomings that this gimbal offers at this moment in time. Because remember, the issues that I mentioned earlier, they can easily fix with a firmware update. But you get so much functionality with this gimbal. The LCD at the front of the gimbal itself on the handle is really nice, it's very bright. You can actually see it on a bright daylight, which many gimbals give you LCDs that you can't really see when it's a sunny day. And one thing that is really nice is that the on-off switch works with Filmic Pro, ProTake and the default iPhone camera app. So <laughs> that alone makes this gimbal a really nice gimbal to use. As I said earlier, you can adjust the mode on the gimbal itself, but if you want to access advanced features like the inception mode or the dynamic zoom, you need to go onto the app itself. And now the app as a whole, it's okay, especially if you film at 30 and 60 frames per second, it does what every other app is expected to do. But one thing that you'll find with this gimbal, just as with many other gimbals, is that if you switch to the ultra wide lens, you may see the roll axis motor depending on which angle you're holding the gimbal on or whether you're doing time lapses. But the beauty of this gimbal is that you have an ultra wide mode and when you press four times the reset button, it swings and switches to this mode and you don't see the roll axis motor no matter what angle you hold in the gimbal on. And this is really nice for time lapses. Now, one thing that this gimbal does that no other gimbal does, as far as I know, is that you can set up your time lapse on the Hohe map but then have it recording on a third party app. Because as you will know, when you try to do a time lapse with another gimbal and you try and switch to record it onto a third party app, the time lapse stops because they kind of force you to use their own app. And the beauty of this gimbal is that you can do all the settings on the Hohe map and then switch to Filmic Pro, ProTech or whatever app that you use. And I personally think that's a really nice feature. So who is this gimbal for then? Well, I think as the smartphone gimbals go, this gimbal is really hard to beat because it gives you so much. And yes, okay, there is the problem with the uh, tilt axis that is not lockable. But other than that, everything else is not relevant to me because I use a third party app or it can be easily fixed with a firmware update. I can live with the tilt axis not lockable and you know, the payload is fantastic. It behaves as a gimbal is expected to behave. No restrictions on movement whatsoever. And if you are a solo content creator, this AI sensor is phenomenal. It's gonna give you the ability to introduce movement to your shots. And as a whole, I don't know, maybe I'm biased because I enjoy using it so much. And so much so that I would say, this is now my favorite smartphone gimbal. And I think if you were to buy this over any other gimbal, you would genuinely love it as much as I do. And if you want to see a head-to-head -head comparison between this gimbal and the Smooth 5S, I've got it right here, and I think you're going to love it. So click on it, and I'll see you there.